Well, I promised you a little surprise, and here it is. Just for fun, I decided what would happen if I kept working on this painting? What would happen if I just continued to create and saw what else I could turn it into? So one of the things that I'll often do with my work is uh, I'll just keep going till I'm absolutely satisfied. I like the painting that I came up with a lot, but I want to show you what I would do sometimes if I wanted to continue exploring. So what I'm going to do here is um, begin fresh with a new palette. And I've chosen two other opposing colors in the color wheel, blue and gold. I had said sometimes when I really want to switch it up, I let the painting dry a little bit. And then I either introduce a new tool or a new color, and in this case, a new palette. And I'm mixing up a variety of um, colors from blue and gold, like I did with the first palette that we went through together, and seeing how many different tones that I can come up with. I had mentioned to you that often, Paintings take on a mind of their own, and I don't always know where they're going to end up. It's my job to pay attention. So the first thing right off the bat, I'm turning it upside down. I really feel like that helps to turn my brain off and um, just respond to the painting at hand instead of um, preserving the actual picture that's there. As in the first painting, I mixed up my paints with a mixture of about 70% paint and 30% cold wax. I see just by putting that blue sky, or if that is still the sky down, it changed the way um, the trees read. So I'm liking that. And um, here's a new kind of variation in the color. This is uh, a reddish pinkish that I achieved from red, a tiny bit of blue, and, and a lot of white. So it's a toned down kind of a pink. And if I haven't said it before, I'll say it now. I really believe that creativity takes courage, and sometimes putting a bold color like that down <laughs> takes courage. Like I said, it's just paint. I always know that I can paint over it, so down goes the red. And when I'm really watching and paying attention, um, I don't necessarily just uh, cover up an area without thinking about it. So you see sometimes I cover up part of an area to see if I want to leave part of the existing shape there. And I'm introducing a new variation for what I'm going to consider um, my dark tones. I've got a phthalo blue here, which is nice and deep and dark. And like I said, the painting is somewhat set up. so. I'm not as concerned about creating um, mud with my colors. And at this point, I'm really not sure if I'm going to keep the original composition or not. At this point, I'm considering what would it mean if I altered it slightly without changing it completely, and I'm just exploring that a little bit. You can see I'm playing that, that game, that dance of reveal conceal here. I'm putting some paint down and then wiping some off. Leaving some and wiping some off. Again, turning my painting to see if that opens up possibilities. I do have a new kids course that I'm teaching now online. Um, and I would invite you or your friends. Um, it's for elementary school kids and I'm super excited about that. So I'd invite you to check that out if you're interested.
I hope, I wonder if some of you after painting will decide to paint it forward yourself and share your creations with others. It's really pretty wonderful. I think I had mentioned before, sometimes there's a moment in the painting where you realize you're treating something too preciously. And the minute that you allow yourself to cover that up, um, things begin to open up. So I think that I am considering that idea right here, right now. Uh, am I willing to just cover it all up and see what can be revealed as a result of that? Much like that big and wonderful journey I talked about, I know that all the misadventures sometimes add up to how wonderful the adventure is in the end. And um, the, the chaotic moments in our paintings or misadventures can really lead to some rich and wonderful and meaningful results. At this point, this is in real time, I'm um, just exploring, exploring all these possibilities of what if, and I, I'm really not sure at this point what's going to happen. I just continue to play and explore until the painting begins to take a direction that, um, that seems wonderful, and it's definitely not there. I've covered up the nice composition and the, and the painting that I was happy with. And um, I would say that this painting is now going back through its adolescent phase. Again, I'm continuing to turn the painting to see if that opens up um, doors and lets me look at it in a new light. I use all sorts of interesting tools when I paint. Um, I've just shown you a couple here today. Um, Sometimes I'll paint with paper towels. Sometimes I'll even paint with my hands, which is why I wear gloves. I do believe it's my job as an artist to explore as many tools and, and methods of self-expression that I can. And then it's my job as your teacher to help introduce you to all of these different tools in the hope that um, you will find something that really speaks to you and lets you express yourself. And I'm choosing to dig back through to the layers below and see what might be revealed that will be surprising. And that is a method that I'm going to continue with. I don't necessarily have a composition in mind. It's beginning to emerge and it's starting to look um, different than the composition that I began with and I'm, I'm good with that. Now, here's something that's happening. I got some color down there that um, I thought I liked, but I didn't. So I gave myself permission to scrape it off. Here I'm giving myself permission to um, go over that 
that pinkish area that I wasn't really speaking to me. So now I'm, I'm going back over that with another color to try to blend the colors on the canvas itself to see if I can get something that's more pleasing. If you do choose to use oil and cold wax and you'd like more instruction, I mentioned that I have lots of classes. I do have classes on how specifically um, from the very beginning to use um, oil and cold wax paints. Um, one of the things that's important to do is to create um, something on a, a surface that's somewhat rigid. And in this case, it's a, it's a piece of multimedia artboard. I could also be using oil paper. Now I'm really giving myself permission to dig in and see what I can scrape back, what kind of interesting gems I might be able to find. You will receive a recording of this afterwards, which I invite you to, again, watch and rewatch, and then hopefully share your artwork on our Facebook page. And I know some of you might be wondering, how on earth is this going to come to be a, a painting in the end? But I, I'm just encouraging you to um, embrace the chaos as I do as I'm painting. And again, I just trust that I'm going to be able to work it out with the tools that I give you and quieting our minds. Um, it, it is amazing what begins to emerge. Sometimes if I put a color down and I don't love it, I allow myself to try to mix the colors on, on the painting itself. There's some colors underneath that are still wet. And um, again, I try to do this gently so I don't create mud, um, gently, gently and thoughtfully. What I'm beginning to notice as I'm putting down the screen is that um, really what's drawing the viewer's eye to me is the blue in the painting. The blue is quite powerful. So I'm considering how am I going to use that as a tool. I was finding the amount of pink um, distracting, so I'm just uh, playing with the possibility of covering a little bit of that up. And now really um, exploring that color blue, which I'm finding so appealing. There's some happy accidents that happen sometimes when we paint like this. And right now in this section that I'm working on, there are some happy accidents that are beginning to 
Tap in his eyes, scrape down to the layers below, and reveal some of them and cover some of them up. There's some pretty, pretty effects that are taking place. I'm mixing up more colors as I go with my limited palette that I've shown you. Um, sometimes in, when the painting begins to um, emerge, I might want more or less of, of a color that I don't have enough mixed up, and that's exactly what happened there. I'm just creating another dark. And I'm just allowing my tool to follow the shapes that have been organically created by my experimentation. I like that dark shape, but I'm just trying to break up the dark shape a little bit so it doesn't look like one big black blob. And again, reintroducing that um, blue, which I'm finding so pleasing. So the top portion of the painting is beginning to take shape, at least in my mind. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm exploring the possibilities with the bottom half to see if I can make it seem as if it's connected to the top half. If I can create some sort of composition that makes sense.
I'm liking what's happening and what I'm perceiving to be the sky. I'm thinking that that's a beautiful piece of the painting, at least for right now. And I'm beginning to just reinforce the areas and um, accentuate accentuate the areas that I'm that I'm feeling like are emerging as something beautiful. There are lots of visual languages that we that we use in abstract painting, and um, certainly shape is one of them. Color is another. Texture is another. So right now I'm I'm playing with color and shape in the foreground to see if I can um, finesse the painting. I talk a lot about using those visual languages in my online courses that I've been talking about. And again, all levels are welcome from very beginner to advanced. When I hold the tools that I'm using, I, I um, hold them rather loosely and playfully. I feel like the grip that I have in my tools um, does make a difference in, in um, the painting itself. And I want the paintings to feel loose and playful. And that is um, how, I, how I treat the tools that I use as well. So I'm getting towards the end of the painting. And again, if I had... Um, if I decided that I was going to do this over several days instead of um, one sitting, I might at this point um, let it sit, take a picture, and let it dry um, so that I can continue to work on it without worrying about um, making mud. But in this case, I'm just going to continue working it um, with somewhat of a light touch and um, try to bring the painting to closure. So whether you choose to do one painting or two paintings, follow along um, rather closely, or um, make these creations of your own. I really do hope to see your work on Facebook and get to, new, get to know you and your paintings better. I'm really uh, happy to have shared this moment in time with you all, so I'm super glad that you were here. Thank you for joining me. And in a minute, you'll see my final version of this painting, too. I'll put it up on the screen. And let's see what I come up with. I know that it's quite different than what I started with. And I never in my wildest dreams knew that this was the painting that needed to come out. But here it is. the fun and the excitement of these kind of unknown journeys to have the tools to follow them, but uh, not knowing exactly where they're going to end up. Sometimes at this stage, I know it's a little hard to see what's happening because there's a lot of mess on the edges. So I'm just considering cleaning that up a little bit so I can tell what's happening. And once again, I hope to see you guys on Facebook in um, one of the classes that I have a special offer on. Um, 
And it's been really a pleasure. I thank you for joining me. Scratching in some texture for the illusion of some detail in the foreground. Again, using that blue to lead the viewer's eye through the painting. I speak of love, it's not just something that I say.